drop of glass towers and modern sites and plentiful green spaces. Now Vancouver's culinary and cocktail scene is on the rise, excellent restaurants, hopping bars and a distinctive local stamp on them. If you're looking for where to go in Vancouver for music, theatre, arts, the city has many, many museums, galleries and performance venues. And beyond the downtown attractions of Vancouver, days of exploration and sightseeing would be needed to go through them all. A wonderful city. Now, one of the joys of nature, during March and October each year, thousands of whales migrate through the waters near Vancouver, making it one of the best locations in the world for whale watching. Many varieties pass through, grey whales, minkies, but orcas, as I mentioned before. And the waters, as I said, around Vancouver Island, not far away, there are pod after pod of orcas, killer whales, that can be seen. Now, from May to October, that is the prime time to see these migrating whales. Now, of course, in 1971, there was a, we'll call it a movement, Greenpeace. It was born in Vancouver, 1971. Now, of course, it's known for its international environmental programs. Now, with a stunning setting between the North Shore Mountains and the Pacific Ocean, Vancouver is meant to be experienced outdoors. And thanks to its temperate climate and abundance of rain, the city has its fair share of lush outdoor spaces. If the mood takes you, rent a bike. Go to Stanley Park and ride the 17, almost 17 miles of tracks there if you're in the mood. Wonderful. I think when I did it, I rode about a mile in return. <laughs> but it was fun. Oh, just on that picture, that's not me. <laughs> Another way to do it, of course, is there's pathways all along the front and the foreshore. It's, it, it's just stunning. Very walkable. And of course, right near we do, where we dock, there are many, many things to see. Do you remember what that is? The Olympic cauldron from what year? 2012, right at Canada Place. Ah, 10, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yes, 2010. And just for about, it's about a 30 minute walk. I would actually encourage either a taxi or a bus down there. But is nearly a thousand acres of one of the greatest parks in the world, Stanley Park. It's on the tip of Vancouver's thumb, and it has a lot of attractions. Outdoor water park, separate heated outdoor pool. Why does it need to be heated? It's cold. I'm only kidding. Um, it boasts a miniature train that uh, that uh, snakes through the park. Um, Oh, there's so much to do there. I would take a day to explain. But most importantly, Stanley Park is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can meander for free. It's lovely. But if you do want to do it the way that the locals do it, so all the locals tell me, is they all walk the 14-mile seawall daily <laughs> to take in this wonderful waterfront. Arts and history buffs, although I love here, Bracton Point along the seawall in Stanley Park. Uh, that'll be, uh, that's where some First Nation totem poles are on display. And it's estimated that the original totem poles were carved in the late 1880s. And then the Vancouver Aquarium, that's also nestled within Stanley Park. And that is a crowd favourite. The largest aquarium in Canada hosts fascinating exhibits on the marine habitats of the Canadian Arctic and the British Columbian coast, plus an area with African penguins. Tanks teem with sea life where there are black-tipped reef sharks, 
Pacific fish, sea otters, white-sided white -sided dolphins, and some of those which you can actually have a close encounter with. And the aquarium also runs twice weekly shark shows. And then the next line that it had on its brochure, it said daily feedings. Hopefully they don't go together, those things, I'm <laughs> not too sure. Um, but behind the, behind the scene tours, and also, you have the facility, if you're staying in Vancouver, you can actually stay there overnight. They've got some very interesting things on the nocturnal side, so uh, a wonderful place to visit. And then, of course, Queen Elizabeth Park. If uh, the beautiful gardens in Victoria weren't enough, then here, six mi oh, over six million visitors a year frequent this beautiful park. Set on 130 acres, features rose garden, there's a quarry garden, 1,500 native and exotic trees. It is purely amazing. And you can go into the conservatory where they've got 200 free-flying exotic birds, and not to mention the 500 tropical plants and three different climate zones. So a lot to be done there. Now, this is a lot of fun. If you have vertigo, take someone with you. You can take a walk across the Capilano Suspension Bridge. Who's done that? Just out of curiosity. Well, about half of us. Okay, very good. Did you enjoy? Yeah. Okay. It is a lot of fun. And uh, it was actually constructed 1889. There have been upgrades since then. Uh, because it is 450 feet long and there is a nice little river running below. It, it's very beautiful. I do have many, many pics of that place. I like it. And also, if you do get out and about, if you're staying on, you take some pics, please come show me. I might steal them. Um, no. Love to see where you've been and what you've been up to whilst you've been out and about in town. Now, this is one of my favourite places in Vancouver, Groos Mountain. Love it. It is phenomenal. Yeah, Groos, as in the Scottish Groos. <laughs> Grass Mountain, of course. I love having a dig at my fellow Commonwealth persons. Um, and this truly is wonderful. And if the clouds are as they are there, it is amazing. And I highly recommend, if you have the time, get over there. So let's go visit this wonderful place of Vancouver. So this is where we'll dock. Canada Place. And you'll notice it as we're coming in. It has a distinctive set of sails. And a lot of everything you want to see is right in this downtown area. It is literally right there. Um, the main tourism office as well is off to the left once you uh, actually get outside the terminal, and they can help you with everything and anything that you, uh, that you might want to know. There's also a sky train, if I remember correctly, one, one and a half blocks up on the left-hand side, um, and that takes you everywhere. And if you have an organized transport to the airport, because we don't have too much luggage, I'm sure that wouldn't be a problem. Um, but come, up, come ask me upstairs later about that, and I'll pass that information on to you. This part of town is wonderful. Gas town. John Gassy Jack Dayton, which was a single tavern in 1867, I believe. Historic charm, independent spirit. That's a, a good explanation of this lovely part of the town. Victorian architecture, the thriving fashion scene, impeccably curated De, uh, decor boutiques, one-of-a-kind galleries and some of the best culinary fare in Vancouver. It's a gathering place for stylish locals and an ideal neighbourhood to explore on foot. So another place I would recommend if time allows you. Uh, as you can see there, one of the steam clocks. Now it toots and steams every 15 minutes. Just, I, when I was 
I couldn't believe that, that, that it does. It's amazing. And highly worth the 15 minute wait. And straight up from the port is Granville Street, which that will lead you to the, uh, the main shopping district. Now, there's another little street just up from Granville Street called Robson Street. And as you can see there, Robson Square, this is where all the high-end designer boutiques like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and Chanel are. And there's a little place there called Cloud Nine Revolving Restaurant and Lounge. Nice little place for a cocktail. And if you're a bit hungry, you can come downstairs and on the corners of some of the streets there, you will find Jack a Dog. It is Vancouver's signature Asian style hot dog. I've tried them, loved them. Fantastic. Now, if you decide to head indoors, well, this is a great place to go, of course, Vancouver Art Gallery. Now, it's open 10 to 5, Tuesdays until 9 p.m. Now, when I checked the other day, it was $25 entry Canadian. Once again, contemporary and historical exhibits of paintings, sculptures, graphic arts, photography, and video by regional, national, and international artists. And then there's Science World. This is a charitable organization that engages all that come in science and inspires future science and technologies. And this is open during March to June, 10 to 5. So when we're there, 10 to 5. And near Science World is a little place called Yale Town. Now this is often compared to New York City's Soho neighborhood, which features chic boutiques, restaurants and hotels. This is about a 20 minute walk from Canada Place. Or you can grab the, um, Canada, uh, the SkyTrain from Canada Line and there's a stop for Yale Town. And then once you're outside, grab a ferry that stops along Falls Creek and make sure you stop at Granville Island. This former industrial site is now, I believe, Vancouver's, or one of Vancouver's loveliest neighborhoods. Practically its own mini city. The factories that used to be there are now trendy restaurants, galleries, and theaters. It can be enjoyed all year round. Well, even more so when the weather's warmer. So, if you're in the mood, considering renting a kayak to explore the marinas or pastime at the Free Water Park, located just two miles from the port, accessible by car bus ferry. And entry to the island is free, but specific attractions may cost you a small admission. And then Granville Island Public Market. Now, seeing as you've been on a cruise ship, you probably need to go and uh, stock up on some food. <laughs> this is probably described as one of the best open markets in North America. Seemingly, seemingly endless aisles of fresh produce, local crafts, food stores selling everything from baked goods to ethnic snacks. If the weather is nice, try and grab a seat outside by the water and enjoy. You can watch the ferry boats putter back and forth in English Bay and also possibly a busker may be performing nearby. There's also a little microbrewery there called Granville Island Brewing. So you could enjoy that. And then of course there's, uh, there is a Chinatown in, in Vancouver, but I'm actually going to suggest a, another place. And this is Punjabi's Market. Now immigrants from Punjab, a state that straddles the Indian Pakistani border, if you like curries, this is the place to go. Great food, lots of colour, lots of um, uh, beautiful um, material. It really is worth a little bit of your time, if it allows. Now, the blue arrow, this is where we dock. The red arrow, Stanley Park. As I said, about a 30 minute walk. That's a good walk. I do recommend yeah. taking uh, public transport or a, uh, a taxi. Now, my insider tip for Vancouver, irrespective of the weather, get out and about. It's a beautiful city, 
It has a place in my heart. I, I just love the place. It is phenomenal. Um, downtown is great, but if you can, even head over to the north side. That's a delightful another world as well. So thank you so much for coming along today. I hope I've given you some information and you've